Hey, what's up guys? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review and welcome back. Coming to you today with some more Shovel Knight footage because I just can't get enough of this game and showing the footage so hopefully hopefully it's uh, getting you excited and making you want to go ahead and check that game out. Uh, what I'm talking about today is something that is again one of the theoretical pieces similar to the, one of the last ones that I did. This was inspired by one of my favorite people on the internet, Mr. Kyle Bossman. Hopefully you know who he is. I'm actually going to link the video in question that inspired this conversation below. He has his own show called The Final Bossman on Game Trailers, and he does quite a few other things with the site. He works with their GT Time podcast, I think is the host or the moderator of that, and a couple other things. Um, so what he was talking about in his most recent episode of The Final Bossman was kind of discussing the pre-order culture that we live in today when it comes to gaming. And uh, the pre-order culture is a pretty big deal. That's a very thick, dense culture that permeates everything we do, our entire video game shopping experience. You know, GameStop was kind of the first to really push this big time, and then it became very common amongst other retailers like Best Buy and Target and things like that, and even other smaller video game chains. Um, and, you know, when speaking directly about Kyle Bossman's video... Uh, and his theory, he's extremely negative and down on the whole idea of pre-ordering. Um, and I, you know, I should preface the fact that he actually mentions some of the benefits and positives to it. The fact that it does feel good to put your couple of bucks down on a game, feel like you already own it. You've got it printed on your receipt that this game is already yours as soon as it comes out. And you get to walk into the store and say, hi, I'm this person. Here's my receipt. I'm here for my game. That's already mine. And how that feels good. Um, and I definitely agree with that aspect. But he then goes on to some of the more negative points about the idea of pre-ordering and the pre-order culture and why he feels like that's kind of bad for gaming. So I'm on a couple sides of the fence here. I, I guess I see what he's saying when he feels that it's bad for gaming, but I don't really agree 100% because there's a lot about pre-ordering that I do like and I do understand. Um, on the negative side, I, I do think that there is an aspect of pre-ordering that's sort of influencing the marketing for games and maybe the way games are doled out to us, the customer, that I do think is kind of shitty. I mean, it's, it's so much about this day one sales and about breaking these new records, just like Watch Dogs just did. And now, you know, GTA 5 did before that, and everyone's going to try to beat the new record and... And, and and especially when you look at the marketing, which is very much what the video below about is about. So I definitely implore you to watch that. Um, but it kind of very much gets into the idea of you know the, at the end of every video or any trailer or preview for a new game, it's all pre-order now, go and pre-order now, get this pre-order bonus, this and that. And um, there is a level of that cheapening the experience. I totally understand. Um, and it's also getting to the point where with so much pre-order content being exclusive to certain games on certain platforms or to Sony or Microsoft or what have you, that's another huge thing that I have a huge problem with as well. Um, most recently exemplified by the way the Alien Isolation DLC is being handled. And I've made a couple of videos about that that you can check out below as well. Um... And I do think that that is doing the wrong things for the gamer, you know, not so much for the game itself, because, you know, in the case of Alien, for example, that's actually really quality DLC and pre-order content. I think that the, the quality of it is amazing, but it shouldn't be held back from any one gamer and it shouldn't be alienating gamers or retailers or, and the way and the places that we go to to shop just because one place has it and another place doesn't or yada yada. So I feel like that is a huge problem happening with the pre-order culture nowadays where it's being sort of, it's becoming something that the game industry and developers are using to take advantage of gamers' loyalties. And it shouldn't be that way. It should be pre-ordering should first and foremost be, I know I want this game, maybe I can just pay for it now or just secure my copy so I don't have to search around to, to buy it. I think that's the best aspect of pre-ordering and that's why I do still kind of like and enjoy it. Um, I will tell you that for myself, I pre-order most games that I want, you know, and, and I'm totally happy to do so. Uh, it's five dollars that I know was already spent, sometimes more so. Um, and, and I feel like, you know, to, to, so to the point that Kyle was also making about how it does feel good to pre-order and pick up your game, that's probably the number one reason that I enjoy doing it and still do it to this day. When I walk into GameStop and I know I want Bayonetta 2 or Super Smash Brothers or Destiny, I, I give them my couple bucks and I'm like, I want this game for this system. And it's like, okay, mister, here you go. This is your game and now here's your receipt. The game is now yours when it comes out. And I like that feeling just because I feel like I, I, I feel like the game is already mine once I do that. It's a game I super can't wait to have and own and play, even four, five, six months down the road. 
And even though the game's not out yet, it's like it's already mine, you know? Granted, I don't really have to do that to be able to pick up the game. I know that I could get it without doing that, but it just feels good and fun to be able to say, well, now I know it's mine, and I know where I'm going to come to get it, and I know when I'm going to come get it, and I'm going to spend this much less to pick it up because I've already got this much money down, or maybe I just pay for it in full already. Um, and I think that that's a lot of fun. I do think that that's the most important part. Um, but the, the negative impacts... The idea of the marketing and advertising pushing for these day one sales and pre-order now, pre-order now, kind of ruining the gaming industry experience, I agree with a lot of that. You know, when you see like the new Batman Arkham Knight trailer and it's awesome and it's cinematic and it's dark and gloomy and the tone is perfect and you're sinking into the moment and it's like, wow, this is great. It looks great. Batman's awesome. I can't wait to play this. And then the very end, Harley Quinn does a backflip, kickflip, stupid shit and then it's all pre-order now at GameStop and it's like... You know, that was an example that Kyle, or maybe somebody else even made a while ago, and that actually stuck with me. As soon as I saw that point, that pointed out, I was like, you know, God, you know, like that really, that makes sense. That is kind of lame. It does sort of just pop in and it breaks the tone of experience this story and this character in this world to don't forget it's a retail copy to go purchase at your retail store. Put this money down. We want you to commit to the sale before we've sold it to you. And, you know, when it pops up in that respect, I totally get it. That's kind of unfortunate. But I don't know. At the end of the day, I guess a pretty short video by my standards today. I'm going to wrap up here already. Um, at the end of the day, I don't think that the negative impact like that has to be felt too much as of right now. More importantly, it's just fun to know that the game is already ours and paid for. Um, the marketing stuff, we know that this is all a business, so I get the idea that they need to push for the sales, and they want to feel they want you to feel committed to, p to purchasing the game before it even comes out. And I feel like that, in and of itself, overall, is fairly harmless and innocent. Um, the way the alien stuff is being handled, and the way that could create a worse culture down the road for this current generation... That is a problem, and that's kind of just going to have to be something that is going to... We're going to have to wait and see. We have to play the wait and see game, I should say, with this. Um, you know, we don't really know where that's going to go. If that becomes more and more of a common practice and more and more of a problem, then yeah, that's going to become an issue, and it is going to be a negative impact that could start affecting how games are developed down the road simply based on this pre-order culture now that has become such a big deal and is all about how... The game companies want us to commit to giving them money, maybe even a little bit too early sometimes. So, I don't know. That's it. That's kind of my short, quick quick and dirty thoughts on the subject. I still love pre-ordering. I have quite a few games pre-ordered right now. I've got the Destiny bundle for PS4, Bayonetta, Smash Brothers, you know, um, Watch Dogs and the Wii U, those kinds of stuff. I still have those games pre-ordered, and there's a few more I'm going to be pre-ordering soon. Probably like Little Big Planet 3 and Halo Master Chief when I know I can get my Xbox One this year and stuff like that. So... I still enjoy pre-ordering, and I hope that the negative impacts that we've seen so far don't continue to get worse and worse down the road. What do you guys think? Is this a problem for you? Do you like pre-ordering games? Are you super against it? Um, do you see these problems becoming bigger issues down the road? Um, I don't know. You know my thoughts, but what is it that you think? And, of course, that's it for today. So, please, of course, feel free to subscribe to Rule of Two Review. Um, it helps me out, and it helps the channel out big time. Uh, if you like the video today, you can like and share it and share your comments and your thoughts on the subject below. And thanks for tuning in, as always, and I will catch you next time.